Rahman Rahim. Hello everyone. This is the third lecture of introduction to bioinformatics class. In the first two lectures, we talked about why the bioinformatics is important for biologists. We talked about how to analyze a gene, why genes are important, why proteins are important, and how that information is becoming challenging. And now we will talk about genes. Let's see from where it all started, like how bioinformatics become became important by every day. Uh, gradually and the significance of bioinformaticians are increasing with every day. So first of all, let's talk about Human Genome Project. Uh, pre previously, uh, there, were, uh, there were a lot of studies uh, which were talking about genes, proteins, individual genes, combination of genes, few nucleotide-based sequences. And with time, the data was increasing and scientists came up with an idea that why we have to look for uh, uh, individual genes or proteins. Why not we go for the whole genome, which may comprise of number uh, a lot of, uh, uh, which may comprise of all the gene genes, proteins, and transcripts. So they thought that probably there would be more than 100,000 protein coding genes and or non coding genes, and then they uh, came up with an idea that within the span of 15 to uh, 15 years, probably they will. Uh, uh, sequence the whole genome and they will identify all 100,000 genes in a human DNA and then they determine the sequences of the 300 billion, 3 billion bases that make up the human DNA and then they have also one challenge that if this much huge information will be sequenced then we have to store it in a database to manage that information at that time it was looking uh, it was uh, almost impossible for the for the biologists to comprehend how that information will look like and then from a lot, all of uh, the uh, countries in the world many main countries like USA Japan France China and others they combine together they gel in together and they start working on the human genome project and came up with the idea that what should be the goal why we have to sequence the whole genomes and they thought that this is important because if we know the whole genome, we know each nucleotide site and each at every position in a genome, then we can alert the patients that are risk of certain diseases. And uh, we can also predict the course of the disease. For example, we can identify those sites which are repeatedly uh, changed or mutated in the, in the genomes of uh, the disease patients. And uh, then we can uh, predict that whether that patient, uh, the, any new patient which is coming and we can just identify that site which was mutated in the previously uh, affected patients. And then we can predict the course of the disease that whether this patient, uh, this uh, disease or patient will cure from that disease or not. And also again, the, to precisely diagnose the disease and ensure the most affected, effective treatment Obviously, when we will know, they thought that when we will know that uh, if what, uh, what are the genomic changes that occur in any specific disease and they, uh, that uh, specific change is repeatedly occurring in the, in the disease, then they can devise an effective treatment strategy to check that whether this treatment will affect, uh, the, uh, improve the prognosis or the, improve the patient's uh, status or not. And again, if that uh, treatment is working, then we can say that we can further develop that uh, treatment at molecular level, and then they, we can then they can perform experiments in mouse model to check whether the treatment is it is uh, it is uh, effective or not. So there can be the main uh, goal was that to uh, identify and to cure a lot of diseases which are uh, which were occurring at that time. And uh, as we know that in today's time that there are a lot of drugs, inhibitors, compounds which are made uh, uh, against any specific disease which have any specific type of genomic change. So this human genome project really helped uh, the biologists and the clinicians and pharmacists to come up with the new effective treatment strategies against any uh, specific disease. And the effort is still going on. Now, the first uh, and the foremost technique which was used for, uh, for in the Human Genome Project to sequence the whole genome was shotgun sequencing. 
and simply in, in a very simplified way the uh, method is as follows that first there is a large fragment of the D uh, DNA which is isolated and that isolated is then fragmented into a lot of smaller sequences pieces as you can see in the left bar and after the, those smaller pieces are then generate, uh, used to generate a random amount of sequence data from the random those random fragments and after that finally piecing the individual sequence reads back together to accurately reveal the sequence of the starting DNA because it is very difficult to sequence the whole genome whole length genome for that that's why it is first fragmented into smaller pieces and then from those smaller pieces it are it, this that is again sequenced one by one and then mapped together we can talk a lot about uh, this technique but I think it's uh, if you want to read it more you can go and search the shotgun sequencing you, uh, on the literature and you can find a lot of details but uh, for you I think it's enough to know that the large fragments are divided into smaller fragments and those smaller fragments are then um, yeah, the redundant fragments are generated using those smaller and then those uh, redundant sequences are mapped together to find the accurate sequence of the DNA. After um, that is very interesting when the whole human genome project was sequenced after sequencing the whole genome that was of 3.2 billion base pairs or 3.2 GB you can say of size they came they uh, identified that out of the whole 100 percent genome only 1.1 percent of the genome was uh, the exons and uh, and 24 percent were introns and uh, just of the 75 percent was intergenic region so uh, the scientists were very confused at that time uh, that only 1.1 percent of the gene region was actually the coding part and you know that what are exons if you know the DNA replication from here if you see that after the DNA is replicated uh, there are exons in a gene and then there are introns and then exons uh, one gene contains multiple exons and multiple introns and from that uh, DNA uh, RNA is generated which also premature RNA which contains the exon intron and all the upstream and downstream regions and from that pre mRNA the mature pre um, um, RNA the mature mRNA is generated which excludes all these uh, in, uh, intronic regions these intronic regions and only this part is actually important for the function of the gene so at that time now we can uh, we know that there are a lot of different uh, uh, important important biological functions of these intronic and uh, uh, intergenic regions but at that time we called this whole region this part as the as the junk DNA you have heard this term junk means that you know what junk actually means it means that uh, it's unimportant only one percent of the genome was important but now we know that there are a lot of promoter sites uh, um, silencers insulators enhancers and other regulatory regions which actually regulate the expression or the function of these genes so yeah so this this uh, whole story is uh, very interesting and uh, you can go through the detail of each uh, exonic regions, intronic regions, intergenic regions and you can come up with a lot of new biological questions to solve that which was not actually known before sequencing the whole genome. And uh, if we go into the characteristics of all the uh, human genome, uh, general, general features of the genome, you can see that uh, the first human genome was sequenced using whole genome shotgun assembly method. Contigs, uh, the number of contigs actually means that the large map reads, reads out of the uh, whole genome the total number of contigs which were identified were 27,478 and the total base pair you know 3.2 billion base pairs were of the consensus sequence was identified and uh, so interestingly the predicted genes using a gene scan method uh, we will discuss maybe in the lab a gene scan actually predicts the number of uh, predict the predict predicts uh, uh, gene based on the sequence we uh, give the, give them as an input, and computationally predicted sequence uh, genes were 40, 43,887, and non-protein coding genes out of those were 22,286, and pseudo genes were 12,000, RNA genes were 9,922, and SNPs were uh, well, there were a lot of SNPs that were identified. 
you know what is the coding gene and pseudo genes pseudo genes are actually those genes which have all the uh, factory for uh, to function as a protein coding gene but due to some evolutionary change or any evolutionary mutation in that gene the whole gene becomes non functional so there is a slight difference between uh, uh, non coding genes and pseudo genes i may ask that uh, from you that to uh, which one is what is the difference between the pseudo gene and non coding rnas uh, 